Okay, uh, my name is Nicole and I'm here today to talk to you about the Warehouse Project, which is the future of the Python Packaging Index. So, oh, my slide's not advancing. So as I said, my name's Nicole, I'm a UI designer and a web developer. I uh, work with a company called PeopleDoc. Um, I'm Australian, I live in London, I work for a French company. Um, it's a bit complicated. PeopleDoc are based in uh, France, uh, in Paris. We have remote workers all over, all over France. And we have three Python teams. I'm not actually technically part of the Python teams, but um, we do hire Python developers. So if anyone's looking for a new opportunity or if they're looking to go remote, um, come and see me after my presentation. I'm also the author of Introduction to Django, which is an O'Reilly screencast, uh, a video tutorial. And most relevantly for this presentation, I am a member of the Python Packaging Authority and the Python Packaging Working Group. So I'll explain what those two things are uh, very soon. So briefly, I wanted to start by explaining what Python packaging looks like today, not from a technical perspective, but from an organizational perspective. So who's working on Python packaging at the moment and um, how, does, how does it work? So many of you may know we have an organization called the Python Packaging Authority and that is the organization that develops and maintains major packaging projects for the Python, pa uh, Python programming language. You'll, you'll know some of them, for example, PIP, VirtualEnv and obviously the Python Packaging Index is one of our projects. Um, the Python Packaging Authority also provides the authoritative documentation for Python packaging uh, via the Python Packaging User Guide. Um, I don't know that this is as known as much as it should be, um, but it's at packaging.python.org. So this organization is not funded at all. We're entirely um, open source, reliant on open source contributions. And all of our infrastructure is donated. So for example, the Python Packaging Index, um, we have all of our services donated. So our CDN, our hosting, etc. And that's actually worth a lot of money because of this, the scale of the service that we're providing. Um, as Python continues to grow and we continue to see problems in Python packaging, this model has become less and less sustainable. Um, so we're seeing some cracks in, in this o completely open source uh, contribution model. So recently um, we established what's called the Python Packaging Working Group. Um, and the objective of this working group is to raise money, uh, raise, uh, apply for grants, appeal to companies to raise money to get some funding into Python packaging to start to uh, solve some of the problems that we're seeing in the ecosystem. Some of the problems that uh, were discussed earlier in a presentation today, we know about those, we want to fix those, but ultimately we need a more sustainable model for addressing them. Um, the idea is to raise money and distribute it to packaging projects. So that's obviously to projects that the Python Packaging Authority are working on, so the official projects, but also if there are projects um, that are related to Python packaging, um, outside of the PyPA, the idea is that you would be able to come to the Python Packaging Working Group and ask for a grant and be granted money to be able to um, move forward with your project. So that's um, a, a sub-body of the PSF. So currently the um, working group is focusing on raising money for the Python Packaging Index. And I'm guessing everyone knows this, but just in case, um, the Python Packaging Index is the central repository for all uh, software for the uh, packages for the Python uh, programming language. Um, so when you install pip install somewhere, what's actually happening is you're going up to Py PyPI and getting the package. And it includes um, obviously a, a web UI for both browsing and finding packages, but also for uploading packages. And that's what I want to talk about today. So. One thing that um, I think is quite surprising is just how large um, the Python packaging is. Uh, it's really core infrastructure for the Python uh, programming language. We serve, and this, this statistic is actually a couple of months old, so it will be <coughs> more than this. We serve over 85 million packages each week, so it's huge. It's absolutely enormous. So you can see that, for example, the donated infrastructure that we get from uh, Fastly, who's our CDM, uh, that's, it's really enormous. 
And I would say that the stability and the ongoing uh, performance of the Python packaging index is really central to the health of the Python programming language, but also generally central to the health of uh, computer science in general. So people are so relying on it. So we have a problem at the moment. Um, the current code base that is powering the Python packaging index is over 10 years old. It was first developed as a proof of concept and then as happens with a proof of concept, it went into production and then things have been bolted onto it over the years. Now, to give credit where credit due, it's been going for 10 years and it's been now serving 85 million packages per week, so it's, it's doing an amazing job, but it's really getting a little bit old and the uh, technology that it was built with is, is quite out of date. Um, we have really poor bus factor. If anyone doesn't know this expression, it means if your lead developer is hit by a bus or in my version, leaves on a bus, um, that your project is going to be in a lot of trouble. We have very poor bus factor on the Python packaging index at the moment. We have one developer, Donald Stuffed, who is our lead developer, and he's really um, one of the few people that knows how to get into the Python packaging index uh, and fix bugs quickly. Obviously, there's other developers who can do it, but he, he has a lot of the domain knowledge. So that's a very precarious situation to find ourselves in. Um, because it's an old code base and we have um, a low bus factor, it means that our new feature development, it's, it's basically not happening. The Python package index hasn't changed a lot um, over the years, and you can probably see that compared to many of the other um, programming languages, what their packaging indexes are doing. So the solution to this problem is a project called Warehouse. And this was started over two years ago by uh, Donald, the lead developer of Py, the Python Packaging Index, um, in response to all of the problems that he was seeing in the old code base. So um, the idea of this is to, um, to obviously address all of those issues that he's found <coughs> in the old, old code base and, and address it with new technology. I became involved in this project about a year ago. Um, Donald put a call out to find a lead designer, and this is my, my work, my design work. So I want to talk briefly about um, the project, but also about the design uh, perspective on this project as well. So we're really, really excited about um, the, pro the warehouse project. And it's not just because it's going to solve the problems of the Python packaging index, but because it's going to really forward um, Python packaging in general. So one thing that's great about it, as opposed to our 10-year-old uh, code base, is that it's based on modern technology. So the old code base, as far as I'm aware, isn't written with a framework at all. You know, so this, it was developed um, before, um, I think Donald said, before we really knew how to do good web development with Python. So we're seeing, obviously, legacy problems with that. This is using uh, Pyramid. Um, we're using Elasticsearch. So we've got a ver very, well, maybe not modern, but we've got a much more modern technical stack. We're also uh, using modern tools as well. So the project is completely set up in Docker. Um, Personally, I, I really hate installing new projects. Um, so as long as I had Docker installed, this has never been a problem for me. So that's a real, a real joy about this project. And obviously, because we're using modern technology and modern tools, it means we're being able to open up the development to more people. So um, we're seeing some contributors to the Warehouse Project who have never actually made open source contributions before. So it's their first time ever contributing, and it's to the warehouse project, which I think a lot of people see packaging as this kind of thing that you have to be an expert to contribute to. But in this case, you know, people are contributing from the beginning of their Python experience. Obviously, modern tech, modern tools, we can develop new features, which is much needed. It's more stable, it's more secure, it's also faster. And we are providing a much improved user experience on the web, on the website, on the uh, UI side. So I want to go over that briefly. So when redesigning the uh, Python package index, I had certain design goals that were centered around the way the Python community works. So the first thing was to prioritize accessibility and usability. So given that we have 85 million um, 
downloads each week. Obviously, we don't have that many people going to the site, but it's, it's, it's a very visited site, and it, people are coming to the site from all different browsers, on different devices, with different needs. So it was really important when designing uh, the new uh, Python packaging index that it was accessible and uh, usable for everybody. And we've actually had some accessibility audits done on the current design, which turned up well, so we're happy about that. The second thing is because Python is an entry, very much an entry level uh, language, being taught a lot in universities now, um, we really wanted to help users understand Python packaging, which I know is not easy, but we're making efforts there. We want to help users to choose the right package. And we want to obviously modernize the visual design. That's actually probably the <coughs> least important point, but it's kind of, kind of obvious. So this is what the home page currently looks like. Um, and these are still work in progress. It's not launched yet, so um, we've got some work to do. But basically what we've done is we've emphasized uh, the search. We have much clearer help. So for example, we've got help links at the top. We've got um, help links in the text here saying learn about installing packages, learn how to package your Python code. So that's all going back through to the Python packaging user guide. So before we had this kind of separation between the public facing um, Python packaging index and the user guide, we're trying to bridge that gap so that people can get to the help information that they need. Um, obviously, from an accessibility um, perspective, we've got large high contrast text. And it's not uh, impressive at all. It's fully responsive. That's not really impressive, but it certainly is an uh, improvement on the old um, design. From the search perspective, as I said, we're using Elasticsearch. So it's much, much more powerful. It's much faster. Um, and we're also trying to introduce ways that you can filter, start to filter uh, when you search for packages. So at the moment, we're doing search filtering by Trove Classifier. I'd like to introduce some other uh, search uh, functions. And so this is a package detail page. Um, so the real challenge with um, the detail of a package is that some packages on the Python packaging index have a lot of information, like this one, and some you know, have nothing very little. So that's the challenge from a design perspective. How can you design an interface that uh, works in both instances? So the main thing is that um, the most important information is first. So how to install, you know, from a be beginner's perspective, how do I, what, what's it called and how do I install it? They're the two most important questions. And then we start to go through and expose the most important information. One new feature, as you can see up here, there's a home page link. Um, so we have um, the, the capacity, you now have the capacity to add generic links to your package. So you could add, so the Django project could add a link to its source code. They could add a link to their documentation, a link to their uh, website and they would all show, show across the top. So this kind of way of using the packaging index is a way to find the package and then being able to get to every point of information about that package. So the good news is we're almost ready to release. Um, we just have a few things to do. So the first phase is really to focus on um, making the warehouse project what you see when you go to PyPy P pypi.python.org. So the focus is on all the public facing pages. So those pages that I just showed you, as well as some of the author pages, um, getting those up to scratch so we can release them. Um, we need to remove some UI functionality that's not ready from on the Python side. We need to make adjustments and improvements. And we also need to improve our infrastructure as well. So we've got some legacy infrastructure that's obviously working with the old site. We need to update that. And the second, oh, excuse me. The second phase is to, uh, after, after the first phase, we, phase, we will um, basically make Warehouse the default project. But you'll still have to, when you want to log in, go back to the old Python packaging index. So we'll have to keep that and maintain that in parallel. The second phase, is the idea is to get up to um, parity with the existing site by providing a logged in user interface. So when you go to upload a package, and also providing an admin interface for managing the site. After these two phases are over, we will turn off the old code base. And we're really excited for that point because it means that we uh, are allowed to or can get rid of the legacy code base, which is causing obviously a lot of uh, resource um, to be drained out of the packaging uh, infrastructure. 
So that's what we want to do. These are ideas that we have for the future. So we had the idea that perhaps on a, when you upload a package, you could um, have a change log in a certain format, and then that would be rendered out in a visual release history on the Python packaging index. So that's one idea. We had the idea of integrating badges. So for example, um, code coverage badges or whether or not your tests were passing, etc. actually integrating those into the index. Um, we want to improve search filtering. Markdown support, at the moment we only support um, RST, so that's one of our, uh, our, our future wants. Uh, I have been told it's not as easy as you might think. Uh, interactive statistics, so we have a lot of statistics on uh, how, how many people are downloading a particular package and fr from what um, operating system, etc. So we want to be able to expose this for the end user to be able to perhaps choose a better package but also for the package author to be able to see, okay, um, how many people have downloaded my package, in, under what, what circumstances, and also perhaps have a, um, uh, an overview of, for example, I've got 10 packages on, on the index and this is how many downloads I've had in total on all my pro projects. Ah, and this one's interesting. So we've also had proposals for a security notification system. So if um, there is a security vulnerability in a package that you're maintaining, you would have a way through the Python packaging index of notifying the people who are using that package to say, hey, you need to upgrade to this new version because the old one's insecure and out of date. Um, so that, that's something that's still very much a proposal, but something we'd like to explore. So the question is, how can you help? You can contribute to this project now at, on uh, GitHub at PyPA Py Warehouse. You can donate to the uh, Python Packaging Working Group, or you can ask your company to donate at donate.pypy.io. And you can actually use the new um, warehouse at pypi.io. So that has um, the same database. It's using the same database as the Py Python Packaging Index currently is. So you can basically be an alpha or a beta. I don't know what we're calling it. You can be a test user, uh, find bugs, and, and let us know what's, what's wrong, what you like, what you don't like. These are some resources. Um, so uh, I will share these uh, via my Twitter uh, once I'm done. But um, basically, we've got some information on the working group and our, um, uh, our goals. Um, we've also got some interesting uh, articles from Donald, our lead developer, about uh, what it takes to actually power the Python packaging index and how many downloads we're seeing, and the type of downloads. Um, we've got a, a podcast that talks about all these issues. Um, a very interesting article from Nick uh, Coughlin about the Python packaging ecosystem. Slightly more technical, but also organizational. And I've also written an overview of the design objectives that you can read as well. So thank you very much. Um, I will post these slides on my Twitter, NLH Kaboo. Um, and uh, as I said, check out the project. And we'd like, love to see you contributing. Thank you. Were, were there any questions? And can they please be in English? Because I can try in French, but <laughs> yes? Hi. Uh, which framework? Uh, the question is, which framework are we using? We're using P Pyramid. Um, and I believe a lot of people say, why didn't you choose Django? Um, and I kind of said that to Donald as soon as I found out he was using Pyramid. Um, my understanding is that because of the legacy database um, that we have, which is, I think, not the easiest thing to work with, um, that Donald couldn't use the ORM in Django. He wanted to use um, a different ORM and Pyramid met a number of other requirements. Um, but everyone who's contributed so far has enjoyed working with Pyramid. So if you don't know it, maybe it's a good opportunity to learn it. Yeah? Okay, do we have any release date? No. <laughs> As I said, it's a completely open source project. We don't have any funding. So it really does rely on um, the availability of those contributors to get, get the work done. If we are to get some funding through the, um, the working group, then we'll be able to put a release date and make plans for these are the things we want to do. Um, but until we get that funding, then it's, 
it's really w when it happens. I think we planned on releasing it last year, so that gives you some indication of, you know, how, how these things go. Were there any other questions? Yeah? <coughs> okay, so the question was, can this be considered an alternative to DevPy, like local? Yeah. local? Um, that's certainly not our priority at the moment. Um, but I believe that there have been some people who have been looking at it as perhaps forking it and, and making it work in that, that way. Having said that, it doesn't serve the same purpose, so it would obviously have to be uh, modified quite a bit to, to serve that purpose. Um, yeah? Is there any like, competition issues that we should be expecting? Nope. Oh, sorry. The question was, is there any transition issues that we should be expecting? No, not at all. As I said, you can start using this now. So it's really just, um, yeah, it's just from our perspective that we've rebuilt the technology. Uh, there's nothing that's being deprecated as part of this process. Yeah? Uh, aren't you worried that some people might abuse the uh, notification system? You, uh, the question was, are you worried that people might abuse the notification system? Yes. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why we're still um, discussing it. There's been a lot of discussions about... Um, how we should expose the, or if we should expose the authors of packages. For example, um, you know, should we allow people to contact um, the maintainers of a, of a project? And do people want this as, as a way of contact? So we understand that we need to be very careful about what information we expose um, and what systems we put in place so people aren't abusing them. Another idea that we had at one point was to um, have like a rating system on 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 um, the packaging index, which I believe they used to have many many years ago, and then they took away um, because it was basically a, a, a sort. It was a problem for the community in terms of people going on and saying this this package is no good, and the um, the author of the packaging package having no way to respond to that, and so it kind of became this. Um, it it opened up the potential for abuse. So we have to be very careful about how we manage that um, to make sure that everyone plays nice. Um, were there any other questions? Nope. Oh, yeah? Um, we do, do you plan to have a way to differentiate packages of good quality uh, from packages that you know, my students make during the work? Okay, so the question was, do, I plan, do we plan to have a way to differentiate good quality packages from um, packages that were made by a, a new developer or student. Um, that's what I was t saying about having the package rating. We had to be very careful about that. Um, we're, I think, going to mainly rely on things like downloads so people can see the popularity of a package, but we have to be quite objective in terms of what is a good package and what is a bad package because it depends what you want the package for and what your application is. So. Obviously, we, we're, we're an index. We're not provi providing really any way. We can't provide any opinion on a package because it's not, it's not our role. Um, so we're going to def defer to, to third parties to do that. So for example, you have the Django Packages uh, website, which, um, which makes comparisons of packages. We're not going to be doing anything like that. And I think there was one more question at the oh, one there. Sorry? Preventing uploading packages? Private packages. Oh, okay. So the question was, have we thought about private packages upload? Not that I'm aware of. Um, although, if that's something that people want, then it's a matter of going onto the GitHub <coughs> repository and lodging an issue. Um, as I said, it's completely open source, so you have the opportunity to influence how it gets developed in the future. And I think there might be one more, g uh, one at the back there. Not that I'm, uh, so the question was, is there RDF or microformat data on the pages? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I'd have to come and talk to you about that later because I'm, I'm not sure. <coughs> and one more, and I think this might be the last one. <laughs> Okay, so, so the question was, will Warehouse be able to be installed for private usage? Um, which is pretty much the same as the question over there. Uh, can, can it be used as like a dev pie? Um, as I said, it's not our priority, but maybe. 
if if you want to fork it and do something, then yeah, but it's it not not currently. Um, I think that's it. Good. Thank you very much.